Well, this is an exciting project. We bought a forest. And the first thing you do when you buy a forest is build a wild shelter. So let's go on with that today. Well, when I said we bought a forest, we actually bought 11 acres of deciduous woodland here in southwest France. It's part of the natural environment, very close to our village. But we intend to keep it pristine. But it would be great fun to camp out some nights. So a simple lean-to shelter is my mission today as a city boy. Well, that's a start, but there's a long way to go. A couple of days ago, Dorothy and our good friend John Goodwin came and visited our new forest. And Dorothy told John what her plans are for this amazing area. So Dorothy, where does your property start? So the forest, starts here. You can see the edge here of yep. this field. It goes all the way up and then all the way down. It's got a one of those weird geometric shapes. Yeah. The wooded hillside nestles in a quiet valley here in southwest France. And how big is it? 11 acres. 11 acres? Yeah, it's, so, it's over 4,000 square meters. I see. What kind of trees are there? Uh, so there are mostly oak, uh, hazelnut, chestnut, okay. hawthorn. Okay. But they're interspersed. Okay. So it's really nice because it's biodiverse. It's okay. not been planted. Right. It's just happened. You go walk down here, there's a, a path, footpath, yes. a, the spring, and then you are into the full forest. What you do on the land, if it's private, is uh, um, regulated, so you're not supposed to pick mushrooms or anything on the on the land, like wood or something of somebody else's. You could pick. Them. Yes, yes, uh -huh, exactly. Yeah. So Dorothy, you mentioned there was a spring. Will we be able to see it today? Absolutely, it's really cool. It's uh, right at the start of the forest. Okay. And um, it looks like there had been a beautiful piece of sculpture, probably a cross or oh, Virgin a Mary, but and someone has put in a different one, but there's a, uh, looks like there was something here that has yeah. either fallen out or been removed. Oh, because there's this metal. Exactly, piece. yeah. So we, would the water be consumable? Is it potable? I don't know. Don't it's know. not very much. So um, usually water, if it's rushing and there's a lot of it, then right. it, it uh, dumps the impurities. Right. Uh, I just don't know where the what the sor you know, source is. It wouldn't be a Professor Simon video without a mystery. And our forest has mysterious walls. These are very old and seem to form a terrace system under the trees. The whole thing seems to be terraced with these amazing walls. And as you go forward, there used to be walls here, obviously. Oh, yeah. um, and then it's just come down. Right, the rocks are still here. Yeah. Like, who built these? Yeah. It was not an individual person, and it's all dry stone. Right. Um, and they had to do a lot of kind of leveling yeah. here. We don't know yet the, the history or who built these. We know that um, someone told us that there were some um, l people living around here. So okay. I just About I just don't when, know. Though? We don't know. Okay. I don't know. Um, so, but you can see these rocks are all, the walls are all, um, very, very thick too. They're, they're, I don't know what that is, uh, a meter. Yeah, you can see right here on the corner. It goes way in, yeah, right. Come on, Moa. 
Come on, let's go. Our dog is a bagel, Up. a basset beagle mix. Come on, you got it, you strong. His name is Oumuamua, after the interstellar visitor, but we call him Mua for short. Well, if you come up, I can get him up and, oh, you're strong. Okay, thank you. They're actually bigger up here. The rocks are bigger. Um, I think it took an army to do this. Um, and how far does it go in there? Uh, pretty far, and then there, it meets one that goes down. Yeah. Why that is going down, I don't know. I mean, that doesn't make sense from, so we have to kind of do some figuring out of these things. But yeah. from the, so if you look at the, at the ground, it's really a forest floor that um, has not had any agricultural stuff because right. it's just uh, baby oaks, yeah. um, baby hazelnuts, uh, a little bit of ivy. What is this? Let me smell it. I it love could the be, berries. It could be a kind of Jupiter, uh, juniper. Let me, ow, okay. it's sharp. But I've never seen one quite like this. That yeah. it's, it's kind of soft and sharp at the same time. Yeah, it's definitely a, a rel... A, well, it's a juniper relative, but it's not the kind you make gin out of. Oh, it smells really good. Yeah. And that's like an acacia, I think. Oh, this one? Yeah, see the little leaves? Yeah. Um, it probably needs more sun. I mean, that's the thing. Everything sits really low until one of these trees keels over. Yeah. And then, boom. Look how tall this wall is. Look how sunken that hole is. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been on this level before. Yeah. Here's an interesting fact for you that I did not know until recently, well, a few years ago, but um, that a dead tree supports more life than a living tree. Seriously, how does that work? All the different insects that live in it and okay. burrow in it and, uh, you know, creatures, birds, um, birds eat the insects. Um, it just actually is important um, to the forest environment because then it breaks down and provides fertilizer yeah. um, to the new trees. You can see the bits breaking down right here. Yeah, so it's important to leave the trees and not pick them up, not even in your yard. You right. know, just because it's dead, it doesn't mean that you need to remove it. Oh, look at that. Um, yeah, so... So lichen are already growing Already in there. growing, and yeah. The more biodiverse the forest is, yes. the better it is for all creatures, okay. the healthier it is, and the less likely it will be to fail with a fire or like one kind of insect gets in and can wipe out the entire forest. Okay when you have all these different trees so it takes that oak but it's not going to bother this one and this one and that you know because okay. they're all different so when you have the more diverse then you have different animals who need certain things to sustain themselves that's right they are so. insects that uh have evolved to only eat one kind right. of leaf in one place right and when you take that away and you bring in other from out you know something from china or right. something from north america the insect can't survive I and see. it dies and then whatever it is that depended upon that uh, insect yes. say a bird also dies also dies away. right so the more you have uh yeah. the yes again the it's it's a healthy wood. right within the forest there's a, a many microclimates depending on what they're living next to right. how much wind they get how much sun they get how much yeah. rain they get you know it's okay. um yeah look here's a bunch of berries up here oh look it's a this is a good hand thing there moa come on Great. Oh, got it. Oh, perfect. We need to build uh, dog um, uh, accessibility. Okay. Oh, it's funny. Oh, The previous owner of this magical place told us in the right season, it's full of mushrooms. Holy sh... There's mushrooms. The champignon. That looks like a sap. 
Now we have to, uh, yeah, it is huge. Whoa. Well, happened just because it rained recently? Yeah, probably. That's what they say. So you need so many days after, but it had rained before. Um, so this is from a previous rain? Yes, probably. Wow. Yeah. It's huge. Weird, huh? Look, it's like grown in three pieces yeah. or different pieces. So if there's one, then combined. there should be more, shouldn't there? Right. Moa! Moa the dog, led by his nose, wandered off into the forest. A typical trait of a lovely bagel hound. He just followed the path. Good job, Moa! Yay! Because this is like traditional forest. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Ah, good boy. Keep going. Keep going. So I found this lean-to uh, that had been constructed a while ago, and uh, Mo and I cleaned it up. We we added more sticks and picked up the ones that had fallen and uh, we think it'd be a really nice place to put sleeping bags and look out uh, at this little hole here. It's a really sweet little thing and I think we can put some new wood and what you do is you layer the wood in and then you can put the moss in and yes. it'll prevent the rain from falling through. Yeah. I'm just going to repair it here. Ah, I got to cut some uh, some wild rose here. Ugh. I think we need a few more and then moss. Then we'll have a nice little place to sleep. So Dorothy, tell me, how was this forest named? So apparently the area is called Risp, which is R-I-S-P-E. Okay. And using, uh, it may be from someone's uh, name, you know, last name, uh, we don't know, but uh, uh, but using the French convention of uh, loving acronyms, yes. we decided to call it the Refuge Inspiré de Santé et Paix Écologique. So in English, that is the refuge, uh, which is the term for kind of a wild area that you are... Preserving. Preserving, exactly, like a nature preserve. Right. So it's inspired refuge of ecological health and peace. Okay. It's hard to just keep flipping it all around. So tell me the acronym again. RISP. R-I-S-P-E. Okay. There's more to explore and more wonders to discover. Leave a comment and tell us what you would do with this amazing place. And please press the like button to tell YouTube that this is the type of film that you enjoy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.